I'm going to go to this next article here. Parents want a complete overhaul of the education system. Uh, I, listen, the last three months I've been to New York, Houston, San Antonio, Orange County, Orlando. I've been in multiple cities and states the last 90 days. Every time I ask this one question, do you, mom and dad, trust the public school system? What do you think the answer I get is? Hell no. Not only no, but hell no. Hell no. Why, why so? What's, what's your thoughts on the current public school system, education system? I walked out of school knowing calculus, knowing about biology, and learning how the difference between there, there, and there, and as much grammar as they wanted to teach me, and some French. But when it came down to figuring out how to do my taxes, when it came down to financial literacy, when it came down to how to have survival skills, when it came down to actually writing a resume, when it came down to people skills, when it came down to having good communication, knowing how to you know use your body language to your advantage when it came down to interviews, knowing how to interact with people, knowing how to network, knowing how to get ahead in life, knowing knowing how to, and basic stuff too, basic, basic stuff, knowing how to wash your clothes, knowing how to wash dishes, knowing how to cook, knowing what's good food, what's bad food, what's spoiled, what's not, how to clean, how to clean a dish, basic stuff that a lot of people nowadays I encountered don't have. I know a lot of people in their early 20s, and I, I know I, I, you know, I know some certain people between the ages of 20 and 25 years old who, they don't know how to wash a dish, they don't know how to wash your clothes, they're asking me like, hey Milton, how do, how do you, how do you, how much detergent do you add to a load of clothes? What me- Either school or your or your mom should have taught you that. Someone else should have, should have taught you that instead of me trying to teach you that now. To this day, Matthew, I'm 31 years old. I graduated mm-hmm. high school in 2010. To this day, I have not used calculus. I have not used anything that I've learned in chemistry. I have not used anything that I learned in forensic science. Zero, sure. Absolutely nothing. How, by, by the way, the viewers is watching this right now. How about you? What's the biggest takeaways and things that you learned in grade school, in junior high, in high school? What's the biggest subjects that means the most to you today? And what would you not rather have studied so therefore, you can reinvest that time and to stop the topics and the subjects that really matter to you. I mean, I, I'm, th- I'm thinking about that too, Milton. You know, with, with my kids going through the schools, and there, there's a there's a survey uh, by the Purpose of Education Index Survey released by Massachusetts-based National Think Tank Populist found a radical shift in the way most of us view education, what our children should be getting out of it. By the way, from a fitness app standpoint, when George was going to public school, I asked him, I said, when you, when's gym class uh, each day? He goes, we only have gym on Thursdays. I says, what? Once a week? Once a week. We used Once, to have it every day. Exactly. Yeah. So the same, even, even you being 30, and some of you in your 20s, the same public education system that we went through is not the same public education school system of today. Completely different. It says also here, respondents say they want students to develop practical skills such as managing personal finances, wow. preparing meals, or making appointments as a top priority. Functions that students a generation ago learned in home economics class. By the way, do you remember your home economics class? I remember one thing in home economics class. What do you remember? How to bake a damn cake. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's how to bake a damn cake. And so check this out too. The, uh, the, this is all prompted many parents to move their children out of public schools and into private uh, parochial schools, which are not controlled by teachers' unions and stayed open during the pandemic. The overall rate of parents choose, check this stat out, the overall parent rate of parents choosing homeschool, homeschooling their own kids grew from 5.4% to 11.1%. Double. What's the problem going to putting your kids in private school or homeschooling? What do you think the problem is? It's like you have your kid in public school system now, right? Yeah. Now you want to pull them out and put them in private school or homeschooling. What do you think the problem is? With inflation, with cost of rising goods and services? A lot of people won't be able to afford private school. That's number one. Exactly. That's the number one thing for, uh, for private, for, for uh, homeschooling. I just like... I can't picture myself putting my, my children in, in, in uh, homeschooling. I, I feel like they would come out socially awkward if they were just to be at home. Homeschool, right. Homeschool consistently behind a, 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 t- a computer screen talking to people. I mean, that, I mean that's, the, that's the direction we're headed right now with our technology. Yeah. That's, that's the way we're headed, with, especially with the metaverse and you know, all these online dating apps. And, you know, you create little avatars and you're, you're married to someone from across the world. And your avatars are married, and now you and this avatar are having a family, and then you're officially married online. But in reality, you're like a 14 year old kid talking to yeah. someone completely across the world. So that's, I mean, that's the direction we're headed. But I, I don't see the true benefit of pers- personally from homeschooling. But going back to to, to their point, um, I know a, a lot of my friends are actual teachers, and a lot of them will uh, debate that on well, Milton, it's not our job to raise it's not our job to raise these kids. It's it's the parents' job. It's their parents' job to teach them. Uh, how to wash clothes is the parents' job on how to teach them survival skills. The parents' job on how to teach them to do their taxes. Our job is to teach them specific topics that we're, we're, we're demanded to speak on, but on survival skills, that's the parents' jobs, and it's not our duty to take on that role. If they want us to take on that role, we should be getting paid a lot more than $30,000 a year. 
I, I agree. And by the way, it's not the school's job to teach our kids sexualization. It's not our school's job to teach LGBTQ. It's not our school's job to teach pornography and all this type of crud that they've seen right now exposing kids to drag shows. It's not our school's responsibility. Our, our uh, school, uh, when, when JoJo's going to public school, we're going to have an LGBTQ class this Saturday if you're more than willing to come. I said, well, can, can, we, can we discuss that with our kids? Why are you introducing the Tim in fourth, fifth grade? It's none of their business. Teach them algebra. Teach them calculus. Teach them that stuff. Teach them biology. Why well, I got to expose them to a topic that's going to further confuse them and cause unnecessary questions that don't need to be had at that, at that specific age. So, again, the reason why there's public education, education issues is because instead of educating, they're indoctrinating. And parents, uh, listen, I think the, the move right now is if you don't trust the public school system, you say, okay, I need to go to private school. I need to go to homeschool. And by the way, I think there's a homeschool communities out there where if there's a neighborhood of homeschool kids that maybe once a day or, or once every other few days, they all get together. Oh, that's pretty cool. I know so, so they can go on field trips. They can have some social. What you're worried about is social interaction, right? Yeah. But also, I think also a good part about that too as well is that uh, you avoid a lot of this unnecessary bullying. Because let's, let's say, for example, you and your three, four kids are meeting with another parents of three, four kids and everybody's meeting together. What's, how big is that class size? You, your class size is three or four kids, your own kids. So if somebody's going to start bullying, you're going to see that shit right away. 100%. And then you have a talk with the parents. They're going to have, hey, hey, let's get together. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? I think you, you, can, you can nip that in the bud right away. You can, you can cause, uh, uh, cause a lot of good when uh, kids know that that's not the right type of behavior. The sad part about the public school system is people use the public school system, to your point with your friends, is they use the public school system as a one big glorified daycare center. 1,000%. And they're not teaching the kids at home, right? Because your kids are spending six, seven, eight hours away from you. You should be the one injecting values and principles. You should be the one course correcting. I remember watching one of my friends, she was in the Chicago public school system. I was just watching her throughout her day. Halfway through the day is spent being a security guard, not a teacher, breaking up fights. And my, this is like three, four, you know, three, uh, uh, th third, fourth, fifth grade. She's breaking up fights. I'm like, when, when do you have time to teach? She's not even teaching. She's breaking up fights. This is the basis for many people today. If you're thinking like a millionaire, guess what millionaires love to do? Private school, boarding school. And that's, a, that's another extreme right there. We put your kids and you, you deploy them to, to somewhere else. But the, the point is you want your, your kids around other kids are thinking bigger in life. I mean, think about this too, Milton. If you were, if you were put in private school, St. Joe's, right there in Westchester, right? Right there, right? right? Yeah. Is, that a, is that not a decent school? Think about what it would be like to go to St. Joe's versus Proviso West where you went to high school. <laughs> a lot of my friends transfer off from Proviso West into St. Joe's, but I think right now St. Joe's, uh, it completely shut down a couple years ago. Oh, did they? Not a lot of people could afford Damn. it. Damn. Okay, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was a good school. Yeah, for sure. It was a really, really good school. A lot of actors, Hollywood uh, uh, actors and actors came from St. Joe's High School. The point is, regardless if the school's open or not, the point is parents had choice. 1,000%. And if you had choice, imagine what the association is with your children, with other parents who are making the same choice for your child. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.